you have your Bibles, let's turn to Matthew chapter 1. thank everybody that worked so hard to make yesterday, last night, such a great success. A lot of fun. Out of hand fun at some point. <laughs> Hallelujah. Once all the dignified people left, it got out of hand, trust me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you came. For all, I'm glad he came for all us messed up folks. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, that shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. If you take a moment, let's lay our Bibles down. And why don't we focus our attention on him right now. Jesus, we love you. We need you. We look for you today. Lord, we're so thankful. We're grateful. We honor you, God. We look to you even now, right now, this moment again. For a desperate need, even greater as each day grows, to be closer to you, O oh God. Oh, we look for that precious name, hallelujah, the name that is above every name, the name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, that wonderful name of Jesus, God with us. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. Why don't you give someone next to you a high five, a handshake, a fist pound, whatever works for your row, and you can be seated in Jesus' name. I'm blessed. I'm thankful. Amen. I'd rather go to church with a few hypocrites than go to hell with all of them. <laughs> well, on Friday, we will celebrate Christmas. It's the day of the year where Christians around the world pause and celebrate the birth of Christ. While there are many holidays celebrated in the United States that are specific only to the United States, Christmas is not one of those. Thanksgiving is a U.S. holiday. The 4th of July is a U.S. holiday. President's Day is considered a holiday, but Christmas is not a U.S. holiday. It is a holiday celebrated around the world. And while the world has tried to make this celebration as secular and as commercialized as possible, for the real Christians... It's not about trees, no matter how many you put up in your house. It's not about the decorations inside or outside. And it's not about the amount or the lack of gifts under the tree. Well, it's not supposed to be. It's about the greatest gift given. The gift of salvation where God made a way for us because he loves us. <laughs> James chapter 1 verse 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, 
with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Pay attention to that word today, shadow. Shadow is an obstruction of light, that something is obstructing the light. Now, that's just a side note. Remember that when I get into some of the details. Okay? He's the father of lights. Lights don't work without power. Are you hearing me? John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, then verse 14 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 14 declares, and the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I just want to speak for a few moments on the light of Christmas. We learn from an early age, some to more degrees than others, to be fearful of darkness. That's why night lights and flashlights and LED lights are so popular, especially in little children's bedrooms. That little light bulb is able to chase away just enough darkness to bring a measure of comfort in the dark. Even as we grow up, there's still an inborn fear of the dark. It's one thing to hear a noise in broad daylight. But hear that same noise and darkness and it kind of changes the complexion of the moment. (laughs) You hear a strange noise in the middle of the day. It's a passing car, a barking dog, a noisy neighbor. But if it happens at night, your wife nudges you or someone tells you, go see what that was. Darkness changes things. Oh, Jesus. Ignorance is another form of darkness. Ignorance is a deadly darkness. Unbelief is darkness. Light is revelation. Revelation is understanding. Understanding overturns ignorance. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 through 7. Stay with me today. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If you don't get this, if you don't understand this, there's a light beckoning you in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. If you don't believe this, Darkness has blinded you. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts. Anybody understand what he's saying there? To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. How many can bear witness of that light? Because he goes on and says, but we have this treasure. The light of understanding is a treasure. See, some people gather all kinds of treasure. But the greatest treasure is the light of the glorious gospel. In earthen vessels, that's the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 
during a sermon, a pastor asked a reflective question to the congregation, not really expecting an answer more rhetorical for the sake of subject. What is a saint? Some might call it a football team down in Louisiana way. <laughs> when he asked the question, a little boy looked up at the stained glass windows of the church and blurted out, people who let the light shine through. There's not enough darkness in all the world to put out the light of even one small flame. Jesus didn't say curse the darkness, but rather <laughs> we're to be the light of the world. Sadly, most of us spend more time focusing on complaining of the darkness rather than being the light. Matthew 5, very important chapter, Beatitudes, character, conduct, a continuation. Yeah, you can have the plan of salvation, but the light must continue to shine post-salvation. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. He's setting you up on purpose. And to give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Well, what's that got to do with Christmas? <laughs> verse 5 of John 1, chapter 1, verse 5 says, And the light... This is the very first verse of scripture I ever memorized as a brand new convert back in the 80s. Shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted as God with us. To understand light, we need to maybe understand darkness. And there are certain overriding themes throughout Scripture that are woven into the Word of God. And one of those themes is the constant ageless struggle that seems to exist between light and dark. Just like the struggle of evil and righteousness. Right from the beginning. The very second verse in the Bible introduces this theme. It says in Genesis 1 and 2, And the earth was out with, without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Under the unction and anointing of God, Moses is penning or being allowed to write the state of the universe before creation began. It was void. It was dark. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness. That word that can stir an element of fear. Jude paints a vividly scary picture of a sinister side of darkness in verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation hath he reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto judgment of that great day. Darkness is able, especially when you're kids, to fabricate in us <laughs> mind monsters. <laughs> if you got a doctor's appointment next week, mind monster telling you it could be bad. If, if you got a dentist appointment, the syringe is really this long, but in your mind, especially in my mind, I'd rather go see a doctor than a dentist any day. It's just, you know, that's one of my mind monsters. Anybody got any mind monsters? You have to know, oh, the, 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 that check or this here, or that. 
oh, and you, and you play, you burst into tears at the drop of the slightest inconvenience. But in a child, a lot of those mind monsters are creatures that are formidable and they terrorize and they seem to reside under beds and in slightly ajar closets and wooded areas or in the backyard after dark. And we tell ourselves, yeah, we're not afraid of the dark. Kind of grew out of that. But each of us <laughs> can remember a time and a place where just the addition of darkness made us uneasy. Honestly, darkness is more than the lack of light. Darkness can be loneliness. Darkness can be a hurt. A wound. A season of desperate times. That's where we get the term, I was a dark time in my life. Someone once said, I'm not scared of the dark, but it's what's in the dark that bothers me. <laughs> There's something about darkness that worries us. And we use the word darkness, but that simply could mean I don't have enough dinero for the end of the, till the end of the month. <laughs> it doesn't take long sitting in darkness that your imagination can run away with you. In all honesty, there's nothing like telling ghost stories around a campfire. You laugh and you giggle and you cut up a little bit around the fire, but when you have to turn around and make your way to your tent in the darkness and the shadow of your own self dancing off the back of the... <laughs> Wait a minute. You go in there. <laughs> yeah. Just a simple call of nature. I myself out hunting. Now, I, I'll tell you right now, I'm the baddest thing in the woods. I am. Until it's dark. <laughs> yeah, I'm maybe bow hunting, and I'll walk all over. I've, been, I've dealt with bears face to face with a bow in my hand, but if I got to go to the bathroom at night, you better believe I got my sidearm. Uh-huh. I'm like this. <laughs> Darkness does stuff. <laughs> Messes with our minds, and it creeps in and can seem to begin to populate the darkness with anything but good. <laughs> Have you ever stopped to consider the darkness? What is darkness? Moses got it right when he used the words like without form and void. Darkness is not the presence or existence of something. Rather, darkness is the absence of of something. Darkness is the absence of a light. Darkness happens where there is no light. This is what Moses saw, the absence of light. But just as this reality dawns on Moses, just as he recognizes that this is the state of an existence where there is no light, when he finally pulls it together, everything changes. Because he finishes the verse, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. You can't sit there and think your praise. You can't sit there and think your healing. If God had to speak it, I know you're prideful and dignified. Well, it's more petrified. But you can't sit there and God knows. Well, God knew too, but he still had to speak it. God knows my heart, but he goes by what your mouth is doing. <laughs> so when he said, let there be light, 
all of a sudden, an amazing, indescribable, bright light floods into the, and invades the darkness, literally less beyond time that we can understand than a millisecond. Darkness is defeated and dispelled. In an instant, it's over. Shortest of conflicts as light in its presence merely darkness can exist. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, where there was once darkness, nothing but light. The entire situation changed. The, the, everything just in a moment, light changed the situation. The term, shed a little light on the subject. <laughs> and God saw the light, that it was good. This is one of the foundations of lasting truth. Light is good. Darkness is bad. We understand this concept from the earliest of our childhoods. But it goes deeper than that. Light and dark are divided. They will never be able to coexist. They stand at opposite ends of the spectrum. They won't be mixed together. They do not mix. They will not coexist. Darkness cannot stand light. They can't occupy the same space at the same time. They are locked in a constant battle, light and darkness. If the power were to go off right now, if darkness wouldn't invade, light would leave. Mm. In the blink of an eye, At the speed that's beyond our understanding, the room would be dark. Not that the darkness had the power to push out the light, but that the light left. Now listen to me. I'm going somewhere. This is just the simple condition of a physical reality. But it stands as an example of a much greater spiritual truth that no matter what your age is, your time is, your understanding is of the word of God and living for God, we should grow daily in our light. In Genesis, the light is good. It reflects God's approval of and goodwill towards his creation. In contrast, darkness and chaos are not good. Genesis describes the journey from chaos to order. Light brought order. John's gospel, if you realize what he uses in the word uh, in the very beginning of his gospel, it's significant. And he uses the same terminology. He understands something. There's a spiritual significance of the event that was recorded by Moses. And John repeats it and he says, in the beginning. So as John rewrites or analyzes or expounds on the Genesis understanding of light, he leaves behind the transition of this physical world from chaos to order. He picks up the idea from Genesis that light is what put darkness on the run. He relates it to Jesus Christ. Jesus dispels darkness. Light chases darkness. Light dispels darkness. Light clears things up. Righteousness will run off evil. John is introducing a different idea of darkness. John speaks of a We know darkness only prevails where light is absent. So John sets out to help us 
understand something important spiritually. Spiritual darkness only happens when we are away from God and the light of his presence. When John looked at the world we lived in, he saw a world not much different than the way Moses saw it. It was without light. It was empty and dark. He saw people. You have to stop and imagine what he saw in a world without God. He sees people who don't know God. He sees humanity stumbling in darkness in need of God. People oblivious of God. How many times have we been in a struggle or a situation? We've thought, oh my God, they need God. John is looking at a lost humanity caught up in religious artifacts and religious ceremony. But still in darkness. People oblivious of God. He sees a world that is far from God. He sees people that literally have rejected God. And even though God robed himself and put on a robe of flesh and walked among them, they were oblivious to who he was. I got to thinking about this uh, during worship and for those three and a half years a few people figured it out. They saw it on those dusty, dirty streets that he walked. There was a few in the crowd that would stumble on their knees to grab a hem, cry out with all their heart. Gee, they understood that there was a light there that could dispel the darkness of their life. I can't even imagine that lady caught in adultery face to face with the light change your life and even though the light shined bright among them with healings signs wonders and miracles many saw the light They didn't understand it. They didn't understand what they were seeing even though it was right in front of them. I'm talking about that spiritual light. We find the root of John's strongly held view of light and darkness in the words of Jesus Christ himself. In John 3 and 19, Jesus said of himself, the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds evil. Now I know some of you don't think you struggle there, but if you're born of woman, you do. This is the sad condition of humanity. This is our struggle. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's the plight of my humanity. It's the plight of my flesh. It's my plight. It's, it's my struggle. It's my ball and chain. The sinful nature of every one of us loves darkness. Mankind, by our nature, prefers darkness over light. We have this propensity. If in the right conditions... Ever since the fall. You know, I, I heard one, one translator, one guy reading a translation, said that in the garden, that Satan, and he took a little bit of what I would call evangelistic license, and though he got Eve over by the tree, that he nudged her to brush up and into the tree. And the moment she touched the tree, they weren't to eat of, and nothing happened. She so, well, okay, this is not too bad. How many of us brush up against things we're told? Well, this is not too bad. This is okay. This is all right. But Genesis 3 and 8. And when they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Sinful nature flees the light. Our flesh prefers sin and evil over the brightness and righteousness of good. 
there's every one of us against corners of hidden darkness. Thoughts, ideas, images, struggles, maliciousness, hatred, variance, greed, covetousness. It's in our flesh. The Bible says if we, if we, if we deny that sin, we lie. Further emphasizing John's writing in John 3, he says, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness run light because their deeds are evil. For everyone that, listen, 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 doeth evil, hateth the light or God. Neither cometh to the light or God, lest his deeds should be reproved. I'm not going to that altar. Don't you preach that to me. Don't. That his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. So John tells us the light shines in the darkness. <laughs> right now, in this temperature, that sounds scary, but understand this. When the light shines in darkness, darkness seeks to evade the light. Let me get out of here. <laughs> darkness wants to swallow up the light to overpower it, to destroy it, to crucify it. That's why they screamed out, crucify him. Let his blood be upon us and our children. We don't like this guy that's walking around healing the sick, the blind see, the dead are raised. Let's end this thing. There's too much light around here. That's why it's easy to get in the car after a service or a message or something that opens the curtain to your dark spots. Well, that's just, that's, that's why it's so easy that you see someone get their dander up. Oh, we know how we do. You can always tell when you got, so we got, they got my goat, I lost my, no. They just shed a little light on who you really are. Uh -huh. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not many today want to admit to saying crucify. There's not a one of us here saying, I would be there yelling crucify. It's not in my right mind, but that's the problem. Because though I would never openly yell crucify, my life seems to scream it clearly. I'll see you, Jesus, on Sunday and Wednesday. But Monday, I'm going to do what I want to do. And unlike Hotel 6, we turn the light off to do what we like, what we love. I hope you're starting to see the miracle of the light of the manger because on that blessed night, Mostly unnoticed. Unnoticed so much that there was no room. Today, there's room for trees and eggnog and family and presents and decorations. But Jesus? Well, hold on. Let's not go that far. A majority. Well, I like Christmas, but the Jesus thing. There's no room here for that. And again... Like in the beginning, the Spirit of God moves upon the void and the darkness of this world every Christmas to declare again to anybody who will look, who will open, let there be light. And the light of the world <laughs> will step into your reality where spiritual darkness and chaos once reigned. If you will open your life and open your heart, remove the things that clutter your life, uh, empty out some rooms, uh, open your mind and let God step in. Let there be light in every hidden part of me in my mind. Those thoughts that I think, uh, well, I get, uh, God, you owe me or I don't want to do that or, oh.
the sudden cry of an infant breaks that silent night with that piercing sound of hope. <laughs> Emmanuel, God, with me. <laughs> you don't know. You don't understand. <laughs> I don't come up here and stand here with excellence of achievement. I don't walk around with the mentality that you need me to show you the way. That you need me to speak the truth. That you need me to say, I come here first, wait a minute. Let me recognize. Let me allow that babe to cry inside of me and let that light shine in every nook and cranny of my life. Let him dispel the darkness in me. That's the true light of Christmas because just like the book of Genesis count, uh, a line had been crossed uh, when God manifested himself in flesh. When, when he trans moved into a realm unthinkable. The world will never be the same. Spiritual light exploded on the scene. Light pierced the darkness Again, when the, in, in Genesis, let there be light. And there was light in the New Testament with this baby. Let there be light. Let, let, me, let me break this down to a simple elementary thought. Let me bring it to this. Darkness is defined as the absence of light. It is a void. It is emptiness and nothingness. But by contrast, light in, in the very simplest of definitions is the presence of energy. The two may be appeared to be locked in a constant struggle, but that's not entirely accurate. Where there is light, there can be no darkness. Light always wins. Oh. <laughs> one has power, oh, and one does not. Light has the ability to overpower darkness. But it's physically impossible for darkness to overpower light. Can somebody do me a favor, please? Run over there to that switch and turn on the darkness. <laughs> Thank you. You have to turn... Your struggle was not flesh and blood. Your struggle is turn the light back on in your life. I wasn't called it. I'm not called to that level. Yes, you are. Turn the light back on. Turn the light back on. Allow Jesus back in. Let him walk up and down the halls of your thoughts, of your mind, of your ways, of your doing. Turn the light on. And darkness loses every time. We have a phrase that we often use in times of injustice. The only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good to be just like you are right now, silent. <laughs> but let me rephrase that for our lesson today. The only thing necessary for darkness to triumph is for people of light to be silent. Matthew tells us and breaks this down. But if thine eye be evil. We don't like these words because we don't want to consider ourselves evil. But understand, wherever Christ can't go, whatever Christ can't touch, is darkness. Because he's the light. So, darkness is instantly where light is not. Are you hearing me? You ever had someone talk about something in your life that's precious to you? You're like, oh, don't you touch that. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. 
If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness when you think you're okay, but Jesus doesn't have freedom. Why did the rich young ruler walk away sorrowfully? Because Jesus said, well, if you really want the light to shine, it's all got to go. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Listen, in Matthew 6, 22, the light or the lamp, the light or the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body is full. What is he saying? Well, put, uh, marry that up to a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Wishy-washy. One minute, I'm all in with God. Then I don't even know if this is real. I don't even know if this is all true. One minute, it's all in. You're preaching your guts out. The next minute, what? If the high be single, the whole body shall be full. Of James 1 and 8 declares it a double-minded man. Let's put a person there. Because if, you, if it's all about God on Sunday morning, but Sunday night you're fornicating, Sunday morning, amen, pastor, but when you're leaving out the door, I just don't like him. Well, what's the matter? I don't have to like everything. No, but whoso hateth his brother shall not spare in a day of vengeance. Lo love your enemies. Bless them and spitefully use you. And James 4 and 8, draw nigh to God, draw nigh to light. And he, light, will draw nigh to you. You see how that works? Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. What's he saying? Our attention must be focused on the light. We must draw closer and closer with every day of our walk with God to the light. Because we can't serve two masters. Things have to fall away as we begin serving God. Because you cannot balance serving God in the world because God lets us know you're going to hate one or the other. And we all know that our deeds are and we're easily darkness and not light. Because even a tiny bit of pollution and the whole body's dark or you'd still eat that plate of food with that fly in there, right? Let me, speak to, let me speak to the men in the ministry for a minute, you ladies, some of you ladies that like to minister. The dead fly is called a fly. It calls the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So that the little folly of him that is reputation for wisdom and honor. We laugh it off. But darkness is not playing. The psalmist understood the light needs to shine in every aspect of my being. Jesus is talking about the thoughts and the intents and the ideas, the opinions of the heart. Those dark protected corners. Well, if I don't say it, I'm not in trouble. <laughs> we got closed rooms and hidden cupboards. Psalms tells us, listen to this. It's going to get better, trust me, but you need to understand the full extent of what we're dealing with and how magnificent Christmas is. Amen. Psalm says, search me. Oh, God, what do you search with? Get a light out. Search me, light, and know my heart. Try me. Look, there's, any, can, you, can I get a witness? I don't want God to know my thoughts. I know he does. You ever get mad at your thoughts? You ever get upset at your thoughts? I lose out with God driving down the road sometimes. I know you don't deal. I can lose out with God if I go to the grocery store. How can they be out of sourdough bread? Are you kidding me? Why can't I get my great popsicles in the fall and winter around here? The struggle's real. I know none of you have that. Why do I starve myself, but I don't seem to get any benefits? 
get an attitude. Search me and know. Shine your light on me, Jesus. There's too much at stake. And every time I turn around, I've got darkness invading my heart and invading my mind. And see if there be any wicked or darkness way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. The miracle of the light of Christmas is that on that night, in the decadence, the debauchery of the world, shrouded in darkness, a light shine that will never be extinguished. Oh, Jesus, I don't want it just to shine in the world, God. I want it in me. Search me. Know me. See it there be. You don't understand. I got a hope when I allow the light of Jesus to shine in my life. I'm doomed without him. And on that night, Angels sang. Shepherds rejoiced. A light, a star had led wise men. And they are called wise men. Light had penetrated the engrossing darkness of humanity. Hope burst on the scene. Light has arrived and light wins against darkness every time. God would shine the light of truth into whosoever will around him. They, they, they understand that, that those wise men represent regardless of what Herod and Pilate and everybody else was doing. There are those that will seek the light despite what they struggle with. And some of them, I got a mighty long way to go. Mm, but shine the light. I'm going to follow the light. Give me the light. But have no fail. Every time we try to, darkness wants to rebel against it. Shrouded in within the dark chambers, hidden in the darkness, they hate it. And after two, listen to this. Listen, I'm going to teach a little bit here for a second. Two days was the feast of the Passover of the unleavened bread, and the chief priests, listen, to this, the religious, the dignified. The who's who sought how they might take by craft and put him to death. Sadly, don't be surprised by the darkness of religious people. Don't judge God by the conduct of religious people. Let him stand on his own word and his own feet. Everyone has to deal with self and selfishness. Sinners and saints. It's just another form of darkness. But let me put this to you. If you read your Bible, have you ever noticed how merciful God spoke and treated sinners? But have you really paid attention how he deals harshly with the religious? <laughs> Why? We've said it. We've all said it to our children. We've said it to our friends. We've said it to our son. You know better. Oh. Oh. You know better. How did you grow dark where you knew to be light? Listen, folks. You ever wonder why people just seem to refuse the goodness and light of God's love? Y'all need to kill that heat or you're going to kill me because that's hot. Drink from. It doesn't make sense. I got it. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to sit right up here and laugh. Okay, we can agree. Let me, let, me, let me touch it on this for a minute. It doesn't make sense. God who so loved 
is still rejected. Why? Let me put it this. Let me put it in simpler terms. We know to forgive, but we don't. Now let me deal with the religious first. You you were done wrong, but you're going to hold on. Or wait a minute. Let me let me get this one. You were offended. It's all darkness. We reject. Not that one, Jesus. Not this one. That's too far. That's too much for me. But let me read it to you here again because I really want you to know how God feels about you. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. He's talking to you. He's talking to me should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Uh, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. This is it right here. That light is coming to the world. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Right? Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth the truth cometh to light, that his deeds may be made manifest. That they are wrought of God. Everybody say wrought of God. I didn't forgive them. Because they made it right. I forgave them because it's wrought of God. You walk around in the fence. You stopped allowing the light to shine in you. you. So here's Jesus. Three and a half years walking. Amongst people. And people are, are turning against him. When he's done nothing but good. Told the truth blatantly and brutally to some people that were real religious. And people spurned on by hell's devils would conceive a plan to extinguish the light of the ages. You ever go to do something good and someone stops you? You just know you should just let it go and just live for God and be joyous and happy regardless because you're able to allow the light of God to shine through you and you do the opposite of humanity and you do something that's more like deity. Oh. But here we have backroom deals of betrayal. They want to, Jesus' own followers propelled the plan of hell. Seeking worldly profit became an easy tool of the darkness. He sold Jesus. He sold the light to be distinguished by darkness. The babe born in a major betrayed in order to be beaten so that he could be scourged, slapped, spit and mocked upon and crucified. So that on a hill. Called Golgotha on an old rugged cross. <laughs> Crucified between two thieves. Crucified between darkness. The plan seemed to work perfectly. <laughs> the devil would believe you sent a baby. I'm sure the demons grinned and laughed with glee when Jesus declared it. It's finished. But they got the physics wrong. They misunderstood how light works. <laughs> Remember that darkness cannot dispel light because darkness has no power. It merely exists where light is not. A sinful men who preferred the darkness over the light sought to extinguish the light by crucifying it. They only... 
plan and the will of God and ensured that the light would shine and spread from that moment and that place to the four corners of the world. And it's still moving today, right now, throughout all the ages of humanity. That light is still beaming and shining and moving and going. <laughs> you know, finally there will come a day and an age where darkness will be banished to the bottomless pit to a place called hell. And the redeemed will dwell forevermore in a city where the land is the light. In a city where there never comes a night. In a city where there is no darkness. But let me tell you how bad the devil messed up and darkness failed. Death and darkness lost. It opened the, oh God, they opened the, the pan, inverted Pandora's box and the light shone bright. Revelation tells us in chapter 1, 17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell on his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have keys. Of hell and death. <laughs> hell and death are defeated. Amen. Revelation goes on and tells us in chapter 21, all the way from the beginning to just about the end, it says, and the city had no need of the sun. Oh, we can't even fathom that. Neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory did lighten it. And the lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light. of. I'm going to walk in the light as he is in the light. Jesus shine that light on me. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. The gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. Everybody say no darkness. born in a manger is the light of the world. You have to understand there may be darkness surrounding your life right now. There may be some things that are out of control. I've come to let you know that there is hope because there is light. I've told you right now there's a way through because we have a savior. There is a light that breaks through despair, that pushes back and defeats all the darkness. There is a light that shatters every chain of bondage. Amen. There is the light of hope that brings the help we need. There is a light that overpowers addictions. <laughs> there is a light that if you'll fix your focus on it, it will dispel the darkness, cancel the confusion, and redeem the there was a light that brings freedom. And what did he say at the beginning of service? Liberty. Amen. All the darkness of hell. Let me say this. Why are we so quick to believe in the dark side? Something bad happens. Oh, the devil. Oh, the devil. Oh, the devil did that. But the moment we say, God and his angels. Oh, man, that, that, they're evil. I can't believe they did that. Oh, my God. That's the, man, they, they. When we start talking about redemption, we start talking about forgiveness. We start talking about the light of God. We talk, talking about the wonderful things. Well, <laughs> no matter how dark hell is, it could never spew enough darkness to extinguish the light of God. In, in this place today, there's hope for you. There's hope for your life. There's hope for your future. There's hope in your family. There's a call that's going forth. You think, man, the world's getting bad. It's getting dark. But 
but the light always wins. <laughs> it is a call. There's a call that's going forth right now. It's amazing to hear the people that are, that are talking and turning and realizing the need for God and the church, and they're looking for a place to come that they could sit and worship in the safety of the light. There's a call that's going out. And I'm going to tell you this, and this may offend you, but there's a call going out to the saint and the sinner alike to allow the light of Jesus to shine again through your heart and your life to cause to come out of darkness of this world and to stand into his marvelous light. Let's stand. Darkness will whisper to you. Oh, no, not you. You can't make it. You're too far gone. But if that light can reach down and go down and take your very keys, <laughs> Jesus has the keys. The devil doesn't even have keys to his own place. He doesn't have keys to his own place. The light can shine. And no matter where you're at, you can make it. Victory is yours. You just got to say, Aha, I'm done with the darkness. I want to walk into the light. Uh, I, every Is it too late for you? Let me ask you this. I've always wondered. It's brought out more conjecture than help until I got this. Why, why that moment with that thief and Jesus? Today, to, wait a minute, this guy's being crucified along with Jesus because he's a thief. He's a scumbag. He's a liar. He's all the above. See, a lot of people try to make this a theological argument. Well, he wasn't baptized in Jesus' name, but Jesus had not ascended yet. Remember that poster when you went, you know, I'll talk to you about that later. Just listen. See, this is why you can't stay silent in the church. You can't. You can't do it, but, but Steve can't do it. Well, it's not my nature. Well, behold, all things become new. Be a new creature. Hello? What did Jesus do? As soon as, because the thief could have thought his mind, well, kind of agree with Jesus. Because they had to come from, he ain't done nothing. But they didn't just stay silent, little aren't. What did he do? <laughs> Milliseconds from eternity lost. Milliseconds. Jesus, remember, you know what he did? Jesus, <laughs> I defeat darkness every day, all the time. Today, today you will be with me in Paris. The light wins every time, even in the last minute, in the last moment. Darkness will tell you you've gone too far. The light says, oh, just give me a moment. Just give me a chance. I want to leave the darkness behind. I want to leave it behind. I, I get, you know what? I don't care if people call me a religious nut. I don't care if I do too much, give too much, sacrifice too much. Because I'll be honest with you. Now, unlike some of you, I'm not just angelic. I'm just not. I got a fight in this thing. My fight is for me to be more like him. I know some of us think we got it all to where we live for God on minimums. Well, that's enough. You know, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I just don't. Carol, I don't have it that good. I, I don't have it like that, Brother Bruce. I, I, I can't sit back on my leaves and think, I got this thing made. I, I'm worried because I know me. I know my thoughts. I know. 
Do I not follow through on it? Yeah, many of them. But the darkness is still there. And to stand there or sit there or to keep existing and walk where that darkness is there, when I have access to the light, that darkness tells me it echoes in all my failures, all my shortcomings, all my issues. Darkness is constantly telling me it's in vain. I struggle in my own prayer life preparing for every sermon, every service. And that darkness is still able to reach in. And there's little pockets of it hidden where I need to open another door covetousness, in my greed, in my worldliness, in my nature, I need more of the light because the light of truth declares the everlasting fact that the promises of God are yea and amen. I never want to get to the place that I don't want to progress even more. I need more light on the subject. <laughs> the Bible says, and John, First John is a beautiful book on this subject. If we walk in the light as he is in the, what's he said? I got a choice. I get it. I get it. You don't need any more light. You don't need to come to an altar. It's your choice. But I don't want to walk in the chaos and confusion of darkness. If there's more to if there's more to learn of God, and I see people throughout the Bible who they just how is it that Enoch and Elijah wah, and yet you and I get complacent with just I spoke in tongues ten years ago. It's the last time you gave up something for God. When's the last time you removed something worldly out of your life to allow more? What, 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 I, have I become stagnant? Walk in the light as he isn't right? What is repentance? It's a change of direction. There's a little bit more darkness I can walk away from. A little bit more of this world that's kind of got its tentacles in me. There's a little bit more of worldliness or carnality that's just, I like to listen to this. I like to do that. It's a sad day when your, 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 your greatest moment of truth right now is a, a song. And not his word. That's a sad state of affairs for anybody. Wait a minute, the greatest lyrics you got is from some songwriter? And not the king of kings? Ooh. I have a choice. I have a choice right now. The world can't take away this choice from me. You can't take this choice. When he robed himself and came as a light in a manger. You may not have room in your end. Jesus, I want you more than I've ever had. Darkness can only prevail, listen to me, where the light is intentionally extinguished. Because darkness has no power. You can refuse counsel. You can refuse his word. You can refuse to be taught. You can refuse to listen. You can get to the place where you think there's nothing left. And God sits back. But it's the simple thing of, you know what? All I have to do is allow the light. Stop avoiding, stop ignoring. And let it come in and sweep darkness away. 1 John 2 and 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. The light of Christmas 
is that in the midst of great darkness in a sin sick world the light shone the darkness was not able to overcome it it was not a temporary flicker it's an eternal flame it's an eternal light every one of us has access to it right now we need to remember that there are times and events in our world, in our own personal lives, that we feel like the light can be snuffed out. You ever felt that way? But the miracle of Christmas declares that whatever happens, the light still shines. Will you and the light will you and will you literally find a place in prayer and say Lord search me and know me because when you step into the light and embrace the truth of God he has a plan and a purpose for you that's the miracle of the manger Let me say this. There's a little girl watching her parents. Dad's running around doing this with problems and packages. Mom's dealing with decorations and decorum. And every time the little girl would come around, they'd say, hey, baby, stay out of the way. All week long. Hold on. But we'll get back to you, baby. And they're, they're getting ready for Christmas. All about Christmas. Decorating and this and that and everything they're doing. And so she finally, frustrated, went to her room. Got down on her knees. And prayed, God. God. Can you help me? Father, in heaven, please forgive us our Christmases as we forgive those who Christmas against us. I wonder if there's anybody, anybody, Are you really ready for Christmas this year? I'm really asking about your activities, about your attitude. I'm actually preaching about your priorities. Because every once in a while, it's not that I hear someone say, but I watch people say with their lives, I just can't get into the Christmas spirit. It doesn't seem like Christmas to me. It's not like my Christmas is used to be. Well, is it what Christmas is meant to be?